All right. Welcome into this week at Gridiron Icon. I am joined by my better half and partner in crime, Mr. Preston Denard. How are we, my friend? Oh, I'm doing outstanding, man. This is going to be a great episode oh. of this podcast. Looking forward to it. We are excited, folks. Our guest is a special one. Today we have a giant of a gridiron icon who has accomplished what many athletes can only dream of. A four-time Super Bowl champion with the Green Bay Packers and Miami Dolphins. He was also a five-time NFL champion prior to the Super Bowl <laughs> years for you youngsters out there. He was the starting tight end of the only undefeated team in NFL history. Looking at you, 72 Dolphins, born in Longview, Texas, our most esteemed, iconic guest tonight is Mr. Marvin Xavier Fleming. Welcome in. <laughs> you love that, don't you, Marv? <laughs> the applause stand. <laughs> Welcome, well, my friend. We're so glad to have you. I have to do something. What's that? The intro was fantastic. All the way up until you said Xavier. Uh-oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's my bad because... My turn. No, you go ahead. Explain that. Tell, tell them why. Xavier was the guy who was impersonating me around the country. That's oh, I know great about this story. Of that story. Mark told I know this story. about this. Yeah. And so, um, are you sure you got the right Marv Lawrence Fleming? Oh, we got the right that's Marv Fleming. Lawrence Fleming. That's for sure. <laughs> I think we have the right guy. We have the icon in the house. Oh yeah. See, I know what he looks like, so <laughs> I can vouch. This is the right guy. Okay. <laughs> you did hit a nerve, though. Oh yeah. Got it fired up. He's ready to tell that story. I so know of this did, story. You know, how did that come about? You two have to talk about that pub, uh, when you're alone. Okay, hi, I'm back. <laughs> Welcome, Mark. Welcome. Uh, Thank you for having me. There is not enough time to do this interview justice. I don't know if we had two hours, three hours. There are so many questions. And Stacy oh, yeah. and I were just so fortunate to at least get some of them in our heads that we can ask you. But uh, I'm going to kick this thing off. My friend is just dying to jump in, too, and I'm going to let him do it. But, Marv, let's just start back from the beginning. Okay. Tell us how you got started. At what age did you begin playing sports? And what sports did you begin playing when you were oh, a young uh, guy? You know, um, coming up, uh, being a, a kid who liked all the sports, I played it all. Uh, I, I wanted to be, um, I, I've always wanted to be the best, mm -hmm. um, whether, you know, whether I was in grade school, grammar school, or whatever. And um, um, I played baseball, basketball. Wow. Um, um, I played football, as you know. Uh, I, I even played um, uh, uh, soccer. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, you know what? I was, I went to the champions. I went to fight for a championship for, for boxing. What? Did you? Yeah. Yes. Like but, AAU? Yes, but guess what? I think, for some reason, I think his handler hit me and knocked me out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I, from then on, I say that's not, uh, that's not my interest. So I, I quit playing um, wow. quit boxing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that and, and is so, interesting. But I do have one story. I'm in the ninth grade um, playing baseball, and I'm out uh, in right field, and nothing's happening out there. I call timeout. Timeout, timeout, I said. And everybody says, what's he calling timeout for? And I said, I quit. I quit. <laughs> I, don't see, I don't see this in my future. I'm better than the pitcher. I get the hits. I get the runs, I, you know, I, I throw the guys out, and you got me out here doing nothing. I quit. Wow. <laughs> that was baseball. That was it? And at early, yes, at early, I think my mom said at an early time in my life, I knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so that was baseball. So I also got, um, going on to college, I got like um, loads and loads and loads of basketball scholarships and football scholarships. I didn't know if I wanted to be a musician. Mm. Yes, a Charlie, a, a Cole Train, or, or a Charlie Parker, because I played saxophone in college for 15 years. So wow. I said, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? So I, I go to all these schools, and they were just saying, 
hey, um, you know, you're going to be make put us on the map and all that. No one talked about education. Mm -hmm. So what happened? I went to a school that the coach says, well, you'll get a million dollar education. <laughs> wow. Wow. And so I went to that school and that school was Utah. Wow. But, but, but uh, I did go before I, before I went there. I went to the school that was going to give me women, wine, and roses. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty I standard home. decision. <laughs> there you go. I called home. I said, hey, Mom, I made it. Said, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> she, said, she says, did you, did you, um, you like it? I said, yeah, I liked it. She says, did they give you anything other than the books and tuition and room and board? Uh-oh. <laughs> I never lied. never lied to my mom. Never lied to my mom. So I'll be home on the next plane. Then when I get home, I look at the board, and I see that million-dollar education. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I called the coach, and I said, um, Coach, uh, Marv, I mean, yeah, Marv, Marv, we heard that. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here at home. Um, do you have any scholarships left? And he says, yeah, how many do you want? I said, I just want <laughs> one. Yeah we, yeah, we have a scholarship for you. I said, and um, I didn't take all the, the, all the college courses. I said, um, do you have um, tutors? <laughs> he says, do we have tutors? We have lots of tutors. I said, good. And he says, anything else? I said, yeah, um, can I have a room by myself? <laughs> wow. You got it. And I said, okay. He says, you're coming? I said, oh, but I got two other things, and I'll tell you by them when I'm coming. He says, you're coming? You're coming to Utah? I says, yes, sir. See, this coach was at UCLA, and he got a job at the Utah. So he had to okay. me in Southern California. So what happened is, like two years later, I'm walking out the field, and the coach says, Marv, I'm in Utah now. Marv, mm -hmm. remember when you called me and said uh, you were coming? And he said there was two things. I said, yes, yes, I remember. He says, uh, do you know what they were? I says, coach, they haven't come up yet. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I had a great time in Utah. I was one of the first. Uh, I was. I was. Well, uh, there was a basketball player, Billy McGill, and myself mm -hmm. were the two men of color on, on campus. Really? And by my senior year, um, I had friends who wanted me to be a writing candidate for student body president, which I, I didn't do it because it was too, I was too much in the limelight. But anyway, um, don't, don't let me talk. What's your next question? You were, you're made for, I mean, I, no shortage of personality here. I'm so, very surprised to hear that. There you go. I, I, you... I had a great time. I had a great time. My time was so fantastic that um, one story that uh, uh, I guess I could tell, uh, the Dean of Women calls me and she says, Mar Fleming, uh, pretty popular on campus, huh? I says, uh, well, I play football and everybody sees me. She says, uh, she always repeated things twice. She says, um, I said, um, are you, did you call me in to um, uh, talk about what happened up at Utah State? You know, there was a big uh -oh. to do up at Utah State, 85 miles north, and said, um, there was a black guy who gets a white girl pregnant. Ooh, in a Mormon era. Ooh. Oh, man. And so Ooh. I said, did you call me in for that? She said, well, no, 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 um, but we can talk about it. <laughs> I said, I said you know, she always repeated, we can talk about it, we can talk about it. So I said, well, you don't have to worry about me because I have 10 credits, 10 credits to get my degree, and I get my fingers crossed hoping that I get to play professional football. Nice. And she says, well, now, well, now. And she said, well, in that case, Mr. Fleming, um, that'd be all. I said, but Dean Probes, I am doing a lot of petting, though. And she gets better than her feet with a, her bun on top of her head. That'd be all, Mr. Fleming. That would be all. Oh, no. <laughs> and so two weeks later, I see her on campus. Good game. Good game, Mr. Fleming. Oh, Dean Probes, hi. How are you? How are you? She says, um, still petting. And I said, uh, <laughs> keep up the good work, keep up the good work. And then we went our opposite ways. But I had a great time in school. I, I learned, um, um, I, I went, I want to get out of Los Angeles. Yeah, because I want to go away to school and meet more and different people. And I did that.
Okay. So, Mark, and wanting to get away from Los Angeles, of course, if we back up a little bit, you attended Compton High School. Ooh. And um, a young black male athlete coming out of Compton, you chose to be one of the first black Americans to go to Utah and be and play sports. What was that dynamic like? What did you consider and how did you process making that decision to get there? Oh, well, don't be mistaken. Uh, yeah. At that time, uh, see, Compton used to be mostly Asians, then whites, huh. then black, and now it's all brown. Wow. Okay? And when okay. I went to school, there was only like about 200 black kids on, on, uh, on campus. Okay. And so... Um, I knew the formula. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew how to act. Yeah. I had good moral, moral mapping from my parents, and I knew how to uh, uh, get what I want and do what I wanted mm -hmm. to do. Very nice. I mean, that's during that time in this country's history, that was no small decision. Now, Preston has enlightened me that you actually grew up uh, while in Compton playing football with your cousin. Yeah. Who you also ended up playing against in a Super Bowl. We did. Yeah. That, Roy, Roy the great Roy Jefferson. <laughs> wow. Sweet pea, they call him. Wow. Uh, oh, Roy, really? Yes. Uh, well, one story, um, the only thing that um, Roy was always faster than I was, mm -hmm. but I challenged him to a – the uh, 404 yard run who has the best time so what does Marv Fleming do? Marvin goes out for like about uh, I think probably two or three weeks prior to our race and, and works out and work out and work out and I time myself and time myself and so when the time came for us to run the race there was a little crowd because Roy and I we had a little, little money on it you know like $10 <laughs> Ten dollars. That was a lot of money to us. So I take off, and I knew that I couldn't sprint the whole way. <laughs> but to make a long story short, Roy sprinted the whole way, which was about halfway around. You know, and I won. So you <laughs> wow. Yeah, you, to run that race, you ever run? You start to cramp up at the. At the oh yeah, uh, they call that the bear. The bear gets on that back. <laughs> and so that's the only thing that I, I, I've ever beaten Roy in, as far as uh, basketball, I, I could, but as far as speed and all that stuff, and catching the ball and running those routes, he was unbelievable. Wow. wow. Yeah. I mean, two great athletes. And then going on to Utah and playing together, that, that had to be that's a wild. unique experience. Yeah, and I, I'm. He, everybody wanted him to go, and he said, Marv, what do you think? You should go. I said, you come here, man, you get an education. And and you and they'll say, well, people say, if I go to Utah, nobody hear about me anymore. I said, well, they, they haven't been around. Yeah, and, interesting. And so, mm -hmm. so you guys ended up going there together, excelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was two years, uh, two years ahead of him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did you guys both... Uh, I, take it from me here uh out left field did you guys end up playing sports throughout your entire like peewee football junior high school high school i mean it's very unique then into college then into the pros as we'll get to yeah, he, was, wild. he was always two years younger so i, I sure. was still I was, yeah. I was a senior you know <laughs> you were the big man <laughs> on senior. campus got it yeah so very nice very nice well you covered a little bit on Utah. I think that's a remarkable experience, particularly if you look again at historically at this country's mm -hmm. history during the '60s, '70s. You know, there were those were very, very, you know, touch and go times uh, but, when it came to race in this country. But for Marv Fleming at the University of Utah, I mean, it was like uh, the world to me. Really? I mean, two, two, <laughs> two. Uh, after a freshman game, two guys came up to me. And this is Mark Fleming. I said, yes. Uh, hi, I'm Judge Ritter. Okay. And I'm Phil Hansen, State, of, State Attorney General. Uh, okay. I haven't done anything wrong. No, no. <laughs> we, we just wanted to meet you. And wow. I, I, um, th that was the first of the best that I met in Utah. You know, uh, a federal judge, 
and the state attorney general. Wow. I, I was there. Um, I was their football player. And so, oh, um, I'm, I'm at his house at a party, a dinner party, and someone says, Marv, um, how do you like it here in Utah now? And I'm eating. Oh, I like it here. The people are really nice and this and that. But uh, this one place wouldn't let me in because I was black. Mm-hmm. And you can hear a pin drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the next day, um, Judge Ritter closed it down. Wow. Wow. Down. I said, what? Well, I don't go there. I don't drink. You know, I don't drink and smoke. I don't go there. Why? Well, no, he said, no. We don't. We don't want that around here. Hmm, that's remarkable. So, huh. so from that then on, to, to, to when I went to school there, I was I had good backing. You know. Was there somebody that inspired you as a young guy? Like uh, looking at the like historically during that time. Was there, you know, Sidney Poitier was big. There was, you know, mm-hmm. Emma, Martin Luther King. There, there was yeah. somebody. Was there somebody that inspired you to, no. or were you just confident in who you are? Well, you know what, my mother raised me to, to be um, assertive. She raised Love me it. to 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 if you don't if you don't know somebody, find out about it. And mm-hmm. I'm the kind of guy that when I go to a party. I kind of fit in, I think, and, and I, I talk to everybody. I get to know everybody because positive people meet positive people. I love that. You know? Yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, and my life has been so fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm living for tomorrow. Yeah. Days past. You know, yeah. I played football. Okay, so I played football. I made a touchdown, so a lot. You know, um, when, when I when I see those people in the stands. They all wish they could be out there. Well, it's not that easy to be out there. Mm-hmm. You know, there's guys, uh, every time I look around, they're, have you heard about so-and-so? You know, he's passed away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, And I was so lucky to play as long as I did. You know, the average, what, what three, three and a half years? Yeah. You know, for a guy okay. to play. Mm-hmm. And I'm playing um, tight end for the Green Bay Packers for five years without the yep. backup. Good right. grief! You were the only tight end on the roster. <laughs> yeah, a boy dollar was a, was a wideout. He would oh, come yeah. in to the third and real right. long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. So, I didn't know that little tidbit. Yeah, I had a great time. I remember one time I was in the huddle and, and uh, we were winning by like thirty points. And uh, Max McGee, I don't know if you remember that name. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah. He was a uh, a good player on his way out of football, but um, we're, I'm in the huddle. I'm looking for my replacement. You know, I'm looking out, and he says, uh, "Marv, you're the only tight end." I said, oh, that's right. <laughs> that is an incredible tidbit in an yeah. era where they carry yeah. three, four tight ends on a roster. Now, I you know. were the you were the only tight end on the legendary mm. Packers. Yeah, what? and when I see tight ends today, um, they're they're wide receivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With me, they used to put uh, what. Um, uh, we had such a, a, a outside game, outside running game with me yeah. blocking down or me uh, um, uh, holding, not holding, um, what's another word for hold? Hold. Oh, hold <laughs> oh, <I>, Don't <laughs> ask defensive no guys. Slapping <laughs> the linebacker and everybody goes like, you know that uh, they, they talk about uh, um, school, school ride or something? Yeah. Yeah. But, that's saying about everybody goes to the right. But anyway, we would we would have the ball for eight and nine minutes, you know, mm-hmm. just running the ball, running the ball, running yeah. the ball, and never got to. Yeah, th- this is this is. Uh, I don't know how I got to, to here, but I never got to be a, a star receiver. Mm. I mean, it's a different I, I, era. I caught what uh, 85, 90 percent of my balls. Right, but. You know, they said, Marvin, how come you're not a Hall of Famer and all that stuff? Well, I am a Hall of Famer in my own, yeah. own head. <laughs> you're a there Green you Bay Packer Hall of Famer. You're a Green I, Bay I, Packer Hall of Famer. But the thing is, is um, they would put the big man over me yeah. and think mm. they, they still, and I still hook him. I still yeah. hook him because he had outside responsibility and his first step was going outside. So his first step was outside. So I'm taking him outside. So we go inside. Yep. You know, you know, when they changed the, the formation, they used to have the linebacker over me. Linebacker was a piece, piece of cake. 
Well, there's a couple of what's it? Wow. <laughs> we want to ask you about those. You know, I, I have about 101,000 questions for you on your pro career. Yeah. But if you don't mind taking us back to, because you, again, you seem to be someone who's had a lot of unique experiences. You were drafted in the 11th round of the NFL draft, but you yeah. were drafted in the ninth round of the um, AFL draft for you young people listening. That Was that a tough decision? Because some guys went AFL, you went Old school NFL with Lombardi. That's incredible. Okay, now um, I thought I went in the second round with Denver. Oh, I, I didn't. Thought, oh, oh, yeah, I thought so. Anyway, you, you may but, have. I may have wrong information. That is fair enough. Okay. Um, back then, AFL, NFL, they had two two drafts. Yep. That's the reason why they have the, they have the Super Bowl now because they they came together. Because right. When the new kid came out of college. They start bidding up that kid, bidding, mm -hmm. and then the price kept going, going up, going up, going up. So we're like Namath, you know, Namath. Um, he got uh, so much money back then, you know, uh, it was nothing now, but yeah. um, that's why they merged. Right. And so I get I um, uh, Denver draft me number two, and so oh, okay. I didn't know, but two a week later I get a call from who. Coach Lombardi. Coach Lombardi. Who? Who is this? Bullshit. This is not Bo Coach Lombardi. <laughs> Maybe you've heard Lombardi of him. Is the phone to? Uh, hi, this is Bill Austin, the Green Bay Packers. I said, who was that on the other line? Uh, that was Coach Lombardi. The Coach Lombardi. Said, yeah. <laughs> Tell him I'm sorry. Tell him twice I'm sorry, because I'm getting a lot of prank calls. Tell him now. <laughs> That's an extra lap. <laughs> and Lombardi heard, you know, heard me, heard it from the phone. And Lombardi says, tell him we're going to draft him right now. Wow. And so, wow. That's awesome. I drafted by the Green Bay Packers. I'm sure glad. But, but, but the reason I stayed is because of one person, Dave Robinson. Dave, Dave Robinson, yes. Dave Robinson was uh, uh, drafted uh, one of the first men of color first round. And as a linebacker too, you know, as as a tight end, he played tight end at um, at Penn State. Okay. And wow. so they 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 needed a backup for the guy they had then, so they brought in about five tight ends. And since I was still available, they brought me up there too. And so what happened is is uh, Dave had to go to the All Star game, and then that gave me the way to wipe these other guys out. They they couldn't block, they couldn't catch. I mean, some could catch, but they couldn't do both. Mm -hmm. And so by the time Dave got there, Dave wasn't as fast as I was. And, and so he they put him at linebacker. And to this wow. day, when I see David, David, I love you, David, I love you. Because, you know, <laughs> they, don't, they wouldn't cut a uh, first rounder. You know that. Yeah. They would cut yeah. a 10th round, 11th rounder. Yeah. 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 They, would cut, they would cut me. But uh, I would, so every time I see David, I, I, David's... Uh, has been very good to me. Well, Marv, you it's know, amazing. this I I find that your journey is is so unique because you captured transitional moments and being a player back in that day, the OAFL, then the 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 NFL championships and then the Super Bowl transition representation, then playing on an undefeated uh, uh, championship team, and then the play in what they call the iconic ice ball. There's so many great measures to your career. How do you grasp all that? Tell us about, about that journey during that time frame. Could you, you know, feel something special during that time? Um, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. You work hard. I used to, you know what I used to do? I used to get up early in the mornings and go run on the beach because I'm trying to catch that guy who's in front of me. Like it. And you know, I never saw him, but I know he was there. I know he was better than I was. And I know he made more money than I did. And I hated him. I wanted to catch him. I wanted to be better than he was. Really? I wanted to be better than that like guy it. out there. He, he's out there. I see him. He sees me. God, I got to play a good game. I got to play a good game. I remember there was a scout that came to see Utah and Colorado play. And then the coach told me, all the scouts here to see you and the other other Hildebrand the guy was. 
Mm -hmm. Big tight end. Uh, he says uh, he plays for the uh, the Colorado uh, Buffaloes. He says they're here to see you and him. I said, well, well, they're going to be seeing me. And in the locker room, <laughs> after all the scouts are over, talking to Marv. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. I love it. The story. <laughs> so what I tried to do is use football as just a, another stepping stone in my life. You know, just a, football. Will I? When I tell everybody to play football, no, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. I mean, it looks good and all that, but um, when you have to go to you know, all these guys having head problems and all that stuff. It's, it's yeah. not good. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm talking too much, Pat. No, you're oh, the no. reason we're here. You yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to rein myself in. I know you and Preston are close, but I have so many questions. I mean, I'm trying to wrap my head around Marv. Mm -hmm. A, I love your confidence, and I sense so much old school that today's game is missing. Like, I don't think the guys chase that imaginary competition on the beach anymore. They... We lost that with you. We lost that with Jerry Rice. We lost that with guys that are like, I am chasing greatness. Mm -hmm. I feel like now they're chasing a little different thing. I could be wrong. I could just be sour. But I'm trying to wrap my head how you, in your quiet moments, you're sitting around and you think, my God, I'm playing next to Jerry Kramer and Forrest Gregg. I'm blocking for Paul Horning and Jim mm -hmm. Taylor. Mm -hmm. I, I, I played in nine championship games and I've got lots of rings. Do you ever just have these moments where yeah. you're thinking, "My God, I'm, I'm part of greatness that will live forever"? Like, how does a, a guy like you deal with that? For us people that never get to experience that. Okay. Um, Good question. I can't let myself go there. Oh, interesting. Because that was it's like um, being a great football player and being a bad golfer. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you can't. Uh, there's no way in the world that I could be as great as golfer as I was a football player. Hmm. Interesting. You know? and, 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 and playing um, football, it was, um, it was for my life. I was making money at it. It was um, something that I, um, I don't know, I, I was... I love doing it, but I wouldn't tell anybody else to do it. Uh -huh. Yeah, because it it, it takes you uh, many different ways. It it just you know, um, not every kid who wants to be um, uh, you know growing up they see football and they want to be a football player. They can be something else great. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many other great things you can be and still get notoriety. You yeah. know. Yeah. I still get known writing. And so I just, um, um, in, in, in the, even now, I, I still um, I see kids now. I says, what do you want to be when you get grow up? Football player? Besides a football player, basketball, mm -hmm. besides sports. How's yeah. your grades? Are, have you been in jail yet? Are you doing drugs? That, that's where I am coming from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, or, are, are you making? I said, that's your mom and dad? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they proud of you? Uh, I think so. Well, no, no, no. I, I think they are. Mm -hmm. And the best thing in the world is for your parents to be proud of you. You know, hell, hell with everybody else. If your parents are proud of you, then you got it made. In it. Because your parents will be with you to until they bury you. And yeah. so I, I um, and I, I had um, really good um, uh, moral mapping. You know. Uh, I didn't. I don't smoke. I didn't drink. I I, I carouse a little bit. You know. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh. <laughs> carouse a little bit. <laughs> Never but, saw that coming. <laughs> um, um, I I always want to do the right thing. Yeah. Is that the right thing or the wrong thing? If it's the wrong thing, uh, uh not me, not me. Sorry. Oh, here's one. Here we are in in um, uh, I'm, I'm with the dolphins. This is uh, stuff that. Uh, coming out in my book, which we're not going to talk in my book. <laughs> um, um, okay. We're, uh, we're on freeway. We, we, we go to this town to play um, Southern Town. 
Well, you, we go you go to Dallas to play Dallas Cowboys, and and we rent a car and we could go have soul food in the place have soul food. And in the back, I I smell. I turn around, and the guys in the back were smoking a joint. I said, you got to be kidding me! Stop the fucking car! Stop the car! <laughs> I got crazy. I, we're on the freeway. I took the, uh, I took the, the, the um, not, not the hell bars, what do you call it? The stern wheel. The stern wheel. Yeah. Over, 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 went over. I got, and I said, I got out. I said, you uh. know what? Being down here in Texas, this is what they want. Yeah. Five black guys smoking pot. Not me. Mm. I walked back. I walked up the hill and walked back to the hill. And they, wow. um, that's what I, um, that was, that's my, I, wow. I don't want to get in trouble. Did you How get much that? that... Oh, no, go no, no, go ahead. No, oh, well, I was going to ask. <laughs> With that, with that kind of discipline, how much of that was influenced from the, the, the at least the two great iconic coaches you had in Shula and Lombardi? Was that kind of discipline was always recognizing them? Um, with Lombardi, it was like a, I went from um, the guy in, in junior high school who put me up against the, the, the wall and says, you think you're big stuff now, huh? Mm. You think you're big stuff, but well, you're not. And this is why I learned the word potential. You've got a lot of potential, but you haven't done anything yet. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so I said, I went home and looked up potential, potential, looked up. And yeah, I hadn't. And from then on, um, I always, whatever road I was traveling or hill I was climbing, I was looking for that guy who was better than I was. Mm -hmm. Love that. Yeah, I've been looking for him because you, you got to push yourself. It's, it's like climbing a mountain and, and, and you look at it and you say, oh, wow, I can't do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can do it. You start out. You got to start out first. Yeah. And when you get halfway, your friend is saying, come on back, Flemmy. There's a party. <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> and you get, you get three quarters of the way and you say, oh, gosh. You know, I can't go back now. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the top, it's like, wow, it didn't kill me, and I did it. Wow, um, hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm. I got to go farther than this. Mm -hmm. And and everybody's, how was it, man? How was it? You know, I, I can't tell you how it was because it was, I did it. You know, it's something that you, um, you live for to do and you do it. So you have to go in. So you can't, you can't lie there and, and in your own, you know, I did it, I did it, I did it. You got to do something else. Incredible. I do. Wow. So have you ever caught the guy? Have you ever caught, <laughs> are you still chasing him, Marv? Yeah, I am. Love still it. chasing him. Yeah. Okay. I, I saw him. He was with his really good looking woman <laughs> <laughs> aren't they always <laughs> I, I, I want to catch him and say how'd you how, how'd you uh... <laughs> how'd you meet her <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so I, I mean this is a fascinating thread so we have to ask you yeah. i think it goes well with this i i love the advice you just shot out to this audience uh, as you, in your time in the NFL, having yourself an iconic player, playing with so many iconic players, having an iconic mindset, mm -hmm. was there people that you was there any particular player for the fans out there that was really tough for you to block or mm -hmm. play against? You played with some of the best that fill the Hall of Fame, uh, whether it was with Miami and the undefeated team or mm -hmm. the Packers. Was there somebody that just drove you nuts and you thought, I'm going I'm to chase that guy too? Well, um, I had to prepare for these guys. You see, cool. the, the defensive linemen they would put over me, and these guys are these, these guys. I remember when I saw the time when I saw uh, Bubba Smith. I saw him in the showers. Ooh, Bubba! He, he looked like a Greek god, six nine, <laughs> like you know, just muscles all over the place. I've got to block him. <laughs> yeah. We we had we were going to play them and it was a big game. The Dolphins were going to play the Baltimore, and so they put in the Bubba special. 
above the special. Yeah. Uh oh. That's where I come down. I I get to block him. But meantime, we're watching films there during that week, and we're seeing Bubba. You know, he would take the defense, uh, uh, offensive tackle, and sling the sling him out of the way, and roar the quarterback. You know, <laughs> and then here comes the guard to block the Bubba, and and Bubba tackles the guard and the ball carrier, and the everybody goes whoa. You know, we're looking at this on, on camera on, on film, mm -hmm. and, and I'm. I'm Wake, open my eye up. I said, uh oh, I've got work to do. <laughs> so, all week I practice. We practice called the Bubba Special. And I practice, you know, the closer you come into the line, then the uh, defensive guy says, uh oh, I think there's going to be a double team. Yeah. You know, and then, but I was playing it cool. When I came out of my huddle, I didn't look him in the eye and say, you're next. I didn't do that. <laughs> I, when I broke the huddle, I was like looking out at the clouds, getting myself ready. My body started like a crane, just start to go. And I get down in my stance, you know, I get down in my stance and I can feel the, the excitement because I know that if I get that quick, you know, hit on Bubba, I know the count. I know the count, yeah. Okay. I get Very that. important. Spread out to where he thinks I'm going out for a pass. Mm -hmm. So, in the huddle, Greasy says, All right, Bubba Special, you ready for me? Yes, I'm ready. I wouldn't be ready all week. All right, Bubba Special, I'm three. Ready, break. And so, I, I go out, I'm looking out into the, you know, like I'm not even there. I get down in my stance. 245, 245, hot. And my body starts. Whoa. <laughs> you know, and then, and then, just before hut three, Bubba says to me, "Hey Fleming, this is where I kick your ass." <laughs> I'm like, oh, am, am I pointing? Am I showing him? I, I'm, am I showing him what I'm doing? <laughs> oh, no, 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 hut. And and the picture is so funny. Bubba, it hits me, and I'm spinning around. <laughs> wow. Mom. I'm spinning around, but I still got two <laughs> points because I, I call, I, um, when you, when you, when he didn't make the tackle, mm -hmm. but I, um, I, what's what you call it when you, you keep him occupied. Yeah. I have, mm -hmm. I got two points for that. You get graded on each, each, uh, each, uh, block you make. Oh, okay. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I got yeah. two points, but two. he, uh, but it was so funny because they kept, Rolling it back, you know, do -roop, do -roop, do -roop. Mm -hmm. that's him, he's hitting me with his forehead. So Bubba Smith, I was the unbelievable best of them all. Wow. wow. Uh, that, that is, is awesome. such a cool story. I'm assuming that at some point you might have encountered the fearsome foursome, like Deacon, Merlin, he, Lamar, he Rosie. He up against the head. Yes. Ah. Yeah, he was a slapper. But no, Bubba would, would pound you. Wow. Yeah. Someone asked, me, someone asked me, he says, oh, did you play against the, uh, the Iron? The, uh, per, what's oh, called? Steel Curtain. Steel Curtain. Steel Curtain, yeah. Said, yeah, yeah, we play against him. Yeah, you, you play against uh, AC Greenwood? AC Greenwood. <laughs> uh, yeah, the guy with the gold shoes. Oh, I, said, oh, I only saw Black Souls. Black Souls? <laughs> How about those purple people eaters? <laughs> yeah, I mean. You... Oh, yeah, with Carl Marshall and the guys. Well, oh, yeah. I, I, I had my one of my best games playing, and, and it's like thirty degrees or something. One yeah, of my best man. Games, and I had the flu too. I remember oh, that. Wow. Yeah. This is a kid from Compton, California, ladies and gentlemen, that's playing in ice bowls and yes. thirty degree weather during some of football's most famous games. This is just wow. unbelievable. You know what? Earlier you said I played in four Super Bowls. I played in. Five. Five. Played in five. Oh, was it yeah. five? No, I thought it was five NFL championships, four Super Bowls. Did I have what? it flipped? Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Five, but time ran out. So time ran out. win, but I played in five. Oh, oh well, my you know goodness, what... Marv. Thank you for correcting me. That's Marv, incredible. who can keep up? You played in so many damn championships. I mean, before Brady, it was you. Yeah, you're like the Bill Russell <laughs> of... Yeah, and I'm, all I'm, joking I'm... aside, like... <laughs> Bill and I, we, we, we showed our rings together, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? 
as long as I've known Marv, and Marv, this is a disservice to your dear friend, I have never seen his rings. Whoa. Marv. I've never seen your rings. Not a one. Well, and you would had think, put on. being in the fraternity that I played and having the relationship with the iconic Marv Fleming, that I would have had the joyous pleasure to see the first championship ring. Wow. Before I die, that's what I want, Mar. Oh. <laughs> I, I forget the combination, but it's uh... a... <laughs> I'll bet. I'll yeah, bet. I bet. Back and forth. Anyway. Oh, my God. Phenomenal. Well, you know what? Time is upon us. we got to get to our two-minute drill. There is so much more that we want to ask you. I, and I'm just going to throw it out there. Marv, can we have a part two someday? Uh, I'd love to. I mean, as, as long as you, you, you did say you love me, but. <laughs> I love you. I love you, baby. And, and... Just friends, though. Huh? Just friends. Hey, just, just, just find the code and, and the combination. I just I want like to. <laughs> he just issued a ring challenge to you, Marv. He wants to see that ring. Oh my that, gosh. That's beautiful. I'll, I'll get the rings out one of these days, okay? Marv, before we move on to that, tell us um, where can people, I mean, the work that you're doing now, are you, because I, I know you travel, you you participate a lot with a lot of the Packers yeah. um, organization, and, and, and I assume the Dolphins too, whenever they have um, their gatherings get together. We are, excuse me for interrupting. No, having, go right ahead. For, for everybody who's concerned, the Dolphins are having a, on, um, a ship cruise on um, come um, April second to the ninth. Uh, it's, it's a celebration of the fiftieth anniversary. Oh wow! Yeah. Amazing, so, outstanding, it's outstanding. To be pretty good. Where can people find out about that, Marv? Is there a website or? Um, yeah, it, it's. Um, you can send us later. I'm putting you on the spot, but. Yeah, no, it, there's. I just call the dolphins. Okay. Call the Dolphins. Call the okay. Dolphins. If you're a big Dolphin fan and want to meet some Dolphin players like myself, I mean, just uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, just come up and say hello. I, I just flashed on something. I'm in the airport. I see this man. He's got a uh, Green Bay Packer hat on. And I walk up to him. Excuse me, sir. He says, yeah. I said, um, I noticed you, you have a Green Bay Pack, Packer hat. Yep, I do. Uh, are you a um, Green Bay Packer fan? And he says, yeah, probably the best. I know everything about the Packers. <laughs> Uh-oh. Put him on the spot. I said, wow. I said, but anyway, the reason I came over and asked you, I was in Green Bay, and I I forgot. I, I, I forgot to get the Green Bay hat. And I was wondering, oh, would you sell that to me? He says, uh, no. Uh, oh, whatever you paid, you know, I'll, I'll give you double. No, triple. Nope. <laughs> I said, sir, um, uh, I've been going back to Los Angeles. It's so far away. Do you get to Green Bay? He said, I get there now and then. I said, um, do you know any of the Packers? He says, well, no. Have you ever met one before? No, nope, never have, but I know all about them. I said, you do? <laughs> I said, wow. Oh, my God. So you really, uh, you need that hat signed, you know? I said, do um, um, uh, uh, the quarterback, bar star. Oh, no, but yeah, number, number 15. Um, Jim Taylor, you know, he goes, 32? I said, um, um, uh, 31, excuse me. I said, um, what, um, how about, uh, oh, here's one you probably know, Mark Fleming. Mark Fleming. He says, number 81, went to Miami. Really? Just roll it out. Just roll it out. I said, wow. golly, you really know it. So I can see why you want to keep that uh, hat. I said, what if Mar Fleming wanted to sign your hat for you? And this guy became like, you really want to do that? Are you Mar Fleming? <laughs> <laughs> he got emotional. Oh, my God. Uh, that is so cool. I know it. I said, yes. That group back there was special. It was special. People yeah. clam yeah. onto that. That's, oh, that's history. That people back there are just unbelievable. That's why I go back to Wisconsin all the time. Wow. So, anyway. There's nothing like the Packers. Even in the modern day NFL, there's nothing like the Packers. Like, yeah, and Lambeau Field. Yeah. yeah, that community, all of it. Unbelievable. Well, Preston, it's time for the two minute drill with, yes, one it of, is. with a Green okay. Bay Packer Hall of Famer. You okay. want to hit him up? 
I would love to do it from uh, one a one time one year Packer player to a dynasty right. Packer player. Yeah. So I do have a little connection, and I tell you what, it's it's just being in that community. Uh, you knew. I, I tell everybody. Whether you played one year or played as long as Marv did and had the relationships you had, I think every NFL player should go through Green Bay. Whether you play against them, whether you play for the team, if you don't go through Green Bay, you did not have a career in the NFL. It's so nostalgic. The people are wonderful. It's close-knit. It's like going to the grocery store <laughs> where the stadium is and then so going cool. back home. It's just a community thing. So, Marv. Just kudos to you. Great accomplishment. Two-minute drill, my friend, if you're ready for that. Okay, but what just, we... just before that, yep. Coach Lombardi made me who I am today. Amen. Two Amen. minutes. Amen. Oh, okay, that's part Okay, part two is coming. Yeah, you can't, you can't drop coming. Lombardi, drop Shula. <laughs> we didn't even talk about George Allen with the Redskins. I mean, we yeah. okay, part two is coming. Part two Fleming. is coming. We'll talk about my book next time, too. Yes, we yes, sure will. We would love that. Folks, okay. part two is coming with Marv Fleming. Okay, Marv, the two-minute drill. Here's how it goes, my friend. The first thing right off the bat, wherever you want to take this is fine. We just want to know the psyche of Mr. Fleming. Ready to go? I'm ready. This is the most important part of the game. All right, the two-minute drill. Turf or grass? Grass. Love it. We're kicking. <laughs> All right. Playing in the conditions of snow or heat? Mm, heat. Ah, so like a little Miami, Miami was wonderful for you then, huh? For us. <laughs> Not for yeah. the guy who came down. Not for <laughs> Interesting. All right. Mark, you played in so many. You've been a champion so many different times. You're most favorite Super Bowl or NFL championship game? Well, my I would say what uh, what really beats all of them is when I caught the pass in the last 16 seconds, Miami, Buffalo, we win, we go to the playoffs. Yeah. And, okay. And... Everybody jumped on me and hit me. You son of a gun. We know you could do it. You're crazy. <laughs> Kicking me and, and, and hurt me. And right into my face was something green. Green. And I, I didn't know what it was. After everybody got off, it was a $10 bill. Oh, a $10 bill. I was so happy running up and down the side. Look, look, look what I found. Look at the $10 bill. And they said, the he's more happy in the $10 bill than... <laughs> wow! Amazing, amazing story. He's t he's told that before too. That's a great it. story. All right, your favorite movie? Um, I would say, um, Al Pacino. Oh, Godfather. Al Pacino. Okay, oh, Godfather. It's okay. the best. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it is the best. It's the best. All right, your most underrated teammate at any level? <sighs> underrated teammate. Um. Um, Roy Jefferson. Really? Okay. Yeah. He, yeah. He wow. Should been, he should have been a lot more, a lot, lot um, uh, he should be a Hall of Famer. Wow. Okay. Well said, well said. Okay. Your greatest football achievement, Mark? Mm, uh, saving probably, I, I want to say 75%, probably more money. More than that, but saving seventy five percent of the money I earned. In football. Very important. Very That's important. Incredible. And, I, and I hope all young athletes heard that. I mean, that is so important. Outstanding. That's amazing. On your part. I can't wait for part two. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it's in the book. So many questions. All right. Okay. Here's the here's the uh, the last one and the most important. I might tend to say, who plays Mar Fleming in a movie about? Your life. I don't know. I, I don't know any actors. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> um, he he would have to be. Um, he he'd have to be, be one of the best 
that's what he's doing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know who that could be. That would be a tough act to follow. Okay. We'll bring it up on part two. Cup, yeah. There we go. Yeah. We'll yeah. do it. It, it. It's going where I've gone and doing what I'm doing. I, I'm still uh, racing to not to just to get ahead, to be good ahead, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be um, to be liked, to to be. I don't want to do anything bad. No, I don't want to do anything bad. I want to do everything good, and not just for me. It's yeah. called once I get there, I want to help other people there. I'm not going to close the door. Yeah. You know, come on, it's great up here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Marv, you've been outstanding. We got to do a part two. Just a, just a wonderful time. There's there's still so many questions left on the list that Stacy and I can't get to, but we desire that opportunity. We will certainly be in touch to do so. Just thank you for coming on the uh, Gridiron Icon podcast this evening. Just, just just wonderful stuff. Good good hearing a lot of those stories, too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm living my life on my own terms. There you go. And, it's um, a secret. Thank you. Mm. Wonderful. Well, folks, thank you uh, to my partner, Preston, and to the iconic Marv Fleming for joining us this week on Gridiron Icon. Follow us in all the usual places, all the podcast networks, and you can see Marv in all his glory on our YouTube channel yes. at Gridiron Icon as well. Thank you to the Green Bay Packer Hall of Famer and our first and only person on here that's been on an undefeated NFL team, the only one in existence, the great Marv Fleming. We will see you, you next week. Thank you.